Bernardo, under idealism, what do you make of uh, so-called psi, parapsychology, extrasensory perception? I'm not really a student of parapsychology or, or psi. These are sciences that I'm not very familiar with. Um, so take everything I'm going to say yeah. with, a, with a grain yeah, of salt. I, I, and I'm not, I'm not asking you for a, a, a adjudication of whether it's real or not, but if it is real and, there is, and, and if yeah. the, the exponents of it are correct in some sense, uh, what does it mean under idealism? Yeah. So under analytic idealism, life itself is a dissociative state in the mind of nature. It is this dissociation, this dissociative boundary that prevents us from directly accessing the real states of the world around us. Uh, if we could do that, it would be a form of extrasensory perception, some kind of mm. you know, cognition beyond the senses, because we would be directly accessing the mental states that constitute the world instead of through the intermediation of the screen of perception. C is it plausible under analytic idealism that in life, despite the dissociation, sometimes we can access things across our dissociative boundary. Yes, it is plausible because no process in nature is perfect. Uh, when it stops raining, uh, the water on the ground doesn't evaporate mm -hmm. immediately, right? Nothing in nature is absolutely uh, perfect. When something burns, not all that is combustible actually combusts. So you could say dissociation too is not perfect. There is an obvious, obvious evolutionary advantage to the dissociation. You have to identify with this and not with the world, because if you identify with the world, you don't run away from the tiger. Mm -hmm. So those who identified with the world ended quickly, <laughs> and uh, we are the ones that uh, don't identify with the world. But it's conceivable that in some states of mind or certain genetic makeups, the dissociative boundary is porous, permeable, and people can directly reach across uh, the, the dissociative boundary and pick up on somebody else's thoughts or pick so, up on memories that are not their own. So, and how would that be occurring? Because it would be occurring in the universal uh, subjectivity, uh, the, the various di dissociated things going on, because they could be with clairvoyance, which is you know, just knowing something without a mind, just knowing something that's happening, or precognition in the future, or telepathy between minds, very different kinds of, uh, of, of extrasensory perception but each of them would be happening in reality in this universal... Uh, yes, uh, 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 this uh, universal mind. Universal mind or uh, yeah, yeah. universal in your subjectivity. Own mind. Yeah, in your own mind, you can reach things immediately, right? You can reach to a yeah. memory, you can right. reach to a fantasy, to a feeling, to a right. thought, it's all at hand. Right. Under analytic idealism, nature is one mind, one field of subjectivity. So in principle, you can reach to anything, <laughs> everything's at hand. What prevents it is the dissociation. But if the dissociation is porous, it's not perfect, it's weak, it's permeable because of certain mental states, maybe associated with meditation, with certain drugs, or certain genetic traits, it is conceivable under analytic idealism that some instances of what people call telepathy or precognition, it is conceivable that some of this stuff could occur because, again, dissociation, like everything else in nature, is not a perfect process.